all, it's Ellie and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I will be covering the Mary Morris murders. Now, this case is actually, it's really sad because not only did one person die, but two people actually died due to getting the wrong person. Now, um, this is a story of Mary Lou Morris and Mary McGuinness Morris and how they both sadly tragically met their end. This story starts on the on October the 12th, 2000, 48 year old Mary Lou Morris left her husband, Jay Morris, at home as she left for work that morning. She worked in a bank as a loan officer in Houston, Texas. However, she didn't actually make it to work and throughout the day, she was not answering any of her husband's calls. Around 5 p.m., Three miles from their home, the burnt body of Mary Lou Morris showed up in her car. A man driving around 10 a.m. that morning saw that off the highway there were a load of flames and did actually ring it in to the fire brigade. However, they thought that the flames were controlled so they did actually go and seek out what the case was and what the fire was and if it was actually under control. Due to the condition of Mary Lou's body, they actually couldn't determine what finally killed her. They don't know if it was the smoke or if it was like maybe a blunt force trauma, if it was suicide, they just, they couldn't determine what actually happened. And uh, the only way through her remains, her burnt remains, they could tell and identify that it was Mary Lou Morris was through her teeth. They also noticed that although she was very, very burnt, the, there were still remains of the car and uh, they did note that her purse and her wedding ring were missing. As the news spread that obviously a body has turned up in a car and especially Mary Lou, she was seen as a very, very loving woman and um, she didn't have any known enemies. So no one actually had the thought in their minds that this was like evil intent and um, she was set to be murdered. With everyone talking about this murder, the Houston Chronicles, which is like the biggest newspaper I think in Houston, uh, they received a call and um, it was a man on the other end saying they got the wrong Mary Morris. And uh, this actually kind of went ignored a bit. Well, no one kind of paid attention to this person saying they got the wrong Mary Morris until three days later. Now, our second Mary Morris. Mary McGuinness was a 39 year old nurse practitioner. She had a very successful career and work, was working for some major corporations. She was also in charge of various clinics. She was married to Mike Morris, and they both had a daughter and lived in Houston, Texas. She she was considered a friendly person, a friendly, loving, like family friend, and um, she got along with everyone at her office. However, she, she wasn't keen on one person. This was a Dwayne Young. Now, he was one of the new employees at her work, and he made her feel really nervous. She even told one of her friends, Laurie, that he was capable of hurting her and she kind of was just a bit eerie of him as a character and who he was. Her friend Laurie also recalled one day where Mary came into the office and she noticed that things, everything was different. It wasn't placed how she would normally place it and actually her picture frames had been turned like the opposite direction. Also on her desk, she had a note saying death to her and um, she was convinced that it was from this Dwayne guy. On the same day of her finding the note, she actually went back home, she spoke to her husband how she doesn't feel safe and asked if he could possibly teach her how to use a gun. And um, he did teach her how to use one, he registered it under his name and um, she actually hid it under her driver's seat in her car. On October the 16th, 2000, Laurie visited Mary at one of her clinics because she needs to get like a flu injection and Mary said how she was gonna Once she'd finished she was gonna finish up some work there go run some errands go home and then cook dinner and then just Spend the night in however later that day Mary rang Laurie While she was in the drugstore saying that there was someone outside that kept just circling the perimeter And was just making her feel really eerie so she was gonna just finish up her work she was gonna log out her computer. She wasn't gonna run her errands and she was just gonna go straight home. 12 minutes later, the police received a very disturbing call from Mary and um, this call was actually never released to the public due to it's the phone call of her being attacked and uh, it was deemed too, too disturbing for the public to hear. 
obviously with this call of a woman being attacked running to police police are now taking action so they're trying to find mary and trying to get to her alive um however mary's car was soon found uh with mary in it she was dead she had been shot and beaten the killer tried to cover it up and make it look like it was a suicide however she actually sadly was killed with the same gun she had to protect herself. As this uh, case developed, the police didn't actually believe that these case these two murders were linked. They just thought that um, it was coincidence. However, both families, they didn't think it was coincidence. They thought that somehow they must be tied together, seen as in a state of like two million people, that two women that looked similar, they had the same name, they lived miles within each other, they like both had wedding rings missing and both were murdered in similar situations, they um, they weren't convinced, the families weren't convinced that it was a coincidence. They believed that there are links and they shouldn't be ignored. Now, um, people thought that this was actually the murders under a hitman and that uh, Mary Mc McGuinness was the in like intended victim. However, due to the same town, the similarities and just all these, yeah, the similarities that they both shared that he got Mary Lou Morris instead and yeah he was the one that actually made, made the call to state that it was the wrong one so people should be on watch and um, although no one really cared because it didn't make sense until three days later this would also kind of back up why the very like unproblematic Mary Lou died and uh, seen as ver kind of versus Mary McGuinness she Mary Lou yeah she was a very like nice kind of loving woman and she didn't have victims Versus there's obviously a different side to Mary McGuinness that um, we didn't really know and you don't really speak ill of the dead as such Yeah, she had a few people she kind of bumped into one of those were actually her husband Mike and uh, Mike her and Mike were going for a rough patch because he suspected that she was having an affair with someone at the office Although Mary like said this wasn't true. It wasn't the case Obviously Mike is still having his doubts over it So uh, people started to look into this theory as it was Mike that actually got the hitman and um, he also refused to do a polygraph test and uh, it was also turned out that that Mary had a $700,000 life insurance out on her and uh, if things were to go bad that the money would go to Mike. Uh, Mike actually did ring Mary's phone two hours after she made the frantic call uh, to the police and uh, the phone company released that it was an answered call and um, the duration of it went on for four minutes However, Mike came out and said no, he he, he was ringing and uh, there was like no answer and then he was ringing and um, there was no one on the other end. However, but the um, the people looking at this case thought that actually he rang the hitman and was waiting for the hitman to answer to say that the deed was done and like it was what it was and uh, she was murdered. But um, he, Mike says this isn't true and he actually says that the, the fact that it says it was a four minute duration call was actually the fault of the the phone company they were the ones that brought this like false information evidence forward in both of these cases their wedding rings were missing and this is a very big sign that if you have a hitman that the, the deed is done if you can present their wedding ring to show that this is the right victim and they're dead and uh, a family friend said that a few weeks later they saw Mike, uh, they saw that Mike, Mike and Mary's daughter actually wearing the ring and Mike suddenly had now found the ring so apparently it was missing beforehand. Although Mike was seen as the prime suspect in this case, there was obviously uh, Dwayne Young. He was the co-worker that made Mary feel anxious and just made her always kind of look over her shoulder. As the murder happened and the case went on, Dwayne actually took to social media to very publicly say that he had no involvement in the case. Um, he did actually quit his job. Uh, some suspect it was because Mary showed the manager this letter and how she made him like sh he made her feel on edge and um due to that he got fired or he actually quit i don't know but um yeah he said that actually it was laurie and mike were the people to look at and they were the reason for mary's death and another theory of this case is that um they weren't connected it was no hitman for the both of them just because if you have a hitman you're gonna expect them to like know the number plate know exactly where they work kind of do some profiling on them, make sure they know the difference between a million Mary Morrises and um, just to know 
who they actually really had to murder. It may actually be that Mary Lou Morris's murder and death was actually just something completely different to Mary McGuinness Morris. And uh, they just had no, no correlation. They just seemed to be the two women in the same state with the same name, with similarities, with, uh, you know, like living close to each other. And uh, it just happened to just be two murder cases that sadly went unsolved. Dwayne, he wasn't charged with anything, and Mike Morris, he wasn't charged with anything as well. Yeah, sadly, this is a sad case that actually has gone unsolved. If for some reason you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also DM me on Instagram if you have any more videos you would like me to cover. I love crime cases. I will cover whatever ones you want me to. And uh, you can also comment below what crime cases you would like me to look at. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.